Thank you for joining us on another episode of Redefine. I just talked to Matthew Jordan Smith, renowned celebrity and fashion photographer. I was in Seattle, he was in LA, and the whole conversation was about getting it done. With clients like Oprah and Tyra and Aretha, Matthew shares his very own butterfly effect moment and a complete walkthrough of how you can make business in any economy. You're watching Redefine with Tamara Lackey, presented by Adorama TV. Thank you so much, Matthew Jordan Smith, for joining us on Redefine. How are you guys doing? It's a pleasure being here. I'm Matthew Jordan Smith here in LA, and I am glad, happy, and elated to be a part of the show. Can you give us a quick overview of your work, your style, your focus, you? Oh, a quick overview. Well, it's 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 evolved over the years. It started off in the beginning of my career, 25 years ago. It started off being strictly just just beauty, and it's still the base of my work. Uh, it was just cosmetic. Um, I was shooting for Pantene, L'Oreal, um, Revlon, hair co companies, and, and the cosmetic companies, and it evolved into going from that to shooting celebrities for covers of magazines and basically because of, of my beauty style of work. And that's still basically the big part of my work. It's evolved from, from that into portraits. But the base of my work has always been about capturing the essence of people and making them look beautiful. That's what I've always loved doing. And I still love doing. Making yes. them feel beautiful first and foremost and then look beautiful. So what is Fashion Week next week in New York? Yes. What is your most favorite fashion shoot ever? I think it's probably definitely the, the editorial work. The, um, I did a story with Tyra a couple of years ago uh, where we shot in this old, uh, the old Woolworth mansion. Uh, it's for Canadian magazine. There's a whole beautiful fashion spread, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but then there's also the times working on, on Tyra's uh, top model show. Uh, I shot four times for the show, and those are always over the top, a lot of fun, craziness, uh, way more than you see on TV. Really? Those are always fun because, you know, it's, it's beyond just doing that commission job. It's, it's, uh, it's reality TV. So those, those are always fun as well. <laughs> and we were talking earlier about the idea of not just waiting for business. But yeah. going out and making business, and you Absolutely. have done that very well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your mentality behind that and, and what you've done, an example of a way that you've said, you know what, I'm going to go out and make something happen. You know, you, it's funny because I had a, a meeting today with my agent, and it's, you're always making work happen. It's not about sitting back and waiting for the phone to ring. If you do that, you're going to start. You have to go out there and be aggressive and, and make work happen. And how you do that is you, you shoot what you love. First and foremost, shoot what you love. And then shoot what you want. From that. So if somebody's not hiring you to shoot, it doesn't mean that you can't get work. You'll shoot work that you love doing, and then use that as an emotional piece. You use it to have a gallery show. You submit the work to different magazines, and not just in the States, but anywhere around the world. And even today, my, my agent and I talk about doing that, shooting a story and sending it to a specific magazine, and then using that as, as a press material to send out and get more work. That's how it works. You can't sit back and for the phone ring. You have to always show your best work and put right. it out there. And I love doing that, because then you're showing, you're shooting what you love. It's not an art director out there telling you what to do. You're doing what you love, mm -hmm. and it, it turns into work and you get work doing what you love doing. It's yeah. the best of work. So you will say, you know what, I don't have a client paying me right now for this, but this is what I, I want to do. I envision it this way. I'm going to go ahead and pull it all together, including like hiring models. Absolutely. And, and getting everything together and, and shooting in a gorgeous location and say from, from start to finish, I have no guarantees here. There's no guarantees, period, in life. You know, you, you make things happen. Yeah. You have to first believe fully in your work, in your, in your art, um, and I do. I know if I do the work that I love, I get the, the best models I can find, the best hair and makeup, and we get together and we have fun, 
we're going to make great images. And then from there, people are going to love it. And that's what happens. As a matter of fact, I have more fun doing that type of work than the commission work that I get. Um, every time I do something for myself, that's my vision, it always leads to something amazing. Always. Oh, I love that. I love how you speak of it, too, with such conviction and obvious, like, obvious joy. I love it. I love yeah. photography. Like nothing else, I love photography. If you, um, so take, for example, one of those experiences. What would be an example of something that came out of doing that? Like, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to make it, I'm going to put it together, um, I'm going to submit it to magazines. What happens next? Oh. Does it get picked up? Do you get, do, do you find well, I, I have I have quite a few stories like that, but I'll give you one just off the top of my head. Um, I, I went to an exhibit, and it's an exhibit that I didn't want to go to. I went to see this, this, this above fair, and I'm there, I'm trying to figure out when I can leave, but then I walk into this one room, and it was filled with these beautiful butterflies everywhere. And then, like that, I had this inspiration to shoot a beauty story based on butterflies. So my head's now going, I, mean, I have all these ideas popping through my brain about what to do with these, these beautiful colors of the butterflies. And I, I get back, and I, I call my team, I call my hair and makeup person, and I tell them my idea, but they didn't experience the show. They just hear me talking about it. So I went online and I, I downloaded visuals of butterflies to show them the beauty and color of butterflies that you find in nature. Mm -hmm. And then I sketched out my idea so you can see what's in my head. And we got together and brainstormed and put together these great images based on butterflies. And I called the story Madam Butterfly. So then I entered these pictures as we shot this great story uh, of turning a model into a butterfly. I took the images and submitted it to a magazine. The magazine ran the story. Um, and then they called me also, as, as the images, they called me and said, we want to use this for the cover of the magazine. They ran it as a cover of a magazine. It was a magazine in Italy. It ran as the cover. And then I had it, the same image, actually a different image from the same shoot in a show in New York. Um, I didn't know where it would be in the show, but I came went to New York for the show, and there's this gigantic poster outside the exhibit in the gallery, and it was my image. Out of all the sh images in the show, they chose that image to be the poster uh, walking into the show. So it goes on more than that. So this magazine in Europe that ran the article, uh, I got a call from a gallery in Italy saying, we saw this article, we, we saw your work, we'd like to have you have an exhibit in Italy. So my, my first, exhibit ever in Italy was based off of that. Um, then a year later, another gallery saw that show and they called, so I had another show in Verona. So I had two shows, um, uh, a gallery exhibit, a magazine article, all from doing the work that I love. And remember, I didn't want to go to the gallery in the first place. <laughs> I was compelled to go. And then when I, once I got there, I found this inspiration that led to everything. And that's how life works. That's how photography works. You find your inspiration. You've got to get out there and get out and experience life and find your inspiration. And when you, when you get that moment, that brief second, you go out and you put what inspires you into your work. That's why I can really copy your style because your style comes from your heart and what inspires you. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, you're good to go. Mm, I love that. Do you love that? Was that was a long story, but I was trying to make it shorter and no, I have tons of those stories like that. That's, that's brilliant because that, that's exactly it. You started from here, like purity, inspiration, vision, excitement, just what you saw. And you talked about how you got to get it down because Absolutely. it's really hard to explain your vision to other people if they don't see it because it's really clear in here. They can hear it, but they can hear it, see it, and touch it by having the sketches I can, I can tell them my idea, then I can show them my idea, and they can give them the, the tangible sketch to hold, and then it becomes theirs. And the team brings the image to life. The team stands for together each achieves more. And my team, bring my, they bring my images to life. Yeah. Just for fun, what is one of your favorite toys that you're, I mean, because we've been talking so much oh, about business man, and vision. Favorite toys. Tell you us know, about a it, favorite toy. Just <laughs> give us a nice little shallow break from all this depth that is exhausting us. What's one of your favorite toys to my play with? Favorite toys. Oh my God. I, just one. I, just one. You know, okay, three. I think a photographer is like a gadget person. We love, we love stuff, and 
You know, I definitely have my favorites. Uh, uh, one is, uh, I'm not sure if you can even see it back there, is a, a beauty, beauty dish. Beauty dish, I have. yeah. Um, my, my Profoto beauty dish is, is probably one of my favorite lighting tools that I use a lot. Another tool that I like a lot is uh, my color checker, Passport. I use that a lot in every, every shoot. Uh, um, my magnum reflector, my, 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 uh, my cameras, I guess, is one of my favorite tools right now. Uh, <laughs> right now is uh, my Sony A900. I, I love that camera. And, and my favorite, one of my favorite lenses is, is the 85, which I think I have my a body over here, yeah. So, so, uh, so wait, you literally surround yourself with the things you love. <laughs> You're like, it's oh, it's all, all time, right you know? here. I, I'm, I'm a photographer. I love shooting. I know. I have tools around me all the time. Thank you so much for joining us today on Redefine, and I'm excited to see more of your work. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure being here, being a part of this. Thank you very, very much. On our next episode of Redefine, we sit down with superstar photographer Chase Jarvis in his studio, and he shares some of his loves, including the Polaroid Pogo. The Pogo is an instant wireless printer that lets you share snapshots from your own digital camera or even cell phone. The zinc printing paper technology means you only buy refills of paper, no ink. The prints are two by threes and have a sticky back so you can stick them anywhere. And the printer is sleek, stylish, and pocket-sized for seamless travel. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.